diagram, uh, family tree that is selectively showing um, people who were known or expected to be here uh, down on the right side and then all their ancestors going back. So you can kind of trace back and see how everybody's connected that way. Um, and as far as the people who are represented here who are connected to McCarney's, um, I guess we basically have two uh, branches. And, uh, and, and well, well, let me let me try to set a little context. Uh, so my my ancestor, uh, my ancestor that split off from the James McCarney uh, is uh, Catherine McCarney, who uh, uh, married uh, John Flynn, and um, we have some folks here who are grandchildren of them, including uh, my father Charles Duffy. So we have. Uh, Duffy's, um, uh, we're, we're basically the Flynn split off of the McCarney's. <laughs> so other folks will be, uh, you know, Edmund and French, like that. So, right, yeah. So, so um, uh, I live in, uh, in California in the San Francisco Bay Area, East Bay, and that's our, uh, my father and uh, other members of my family and, and uh, some first cousins uh, who I guess are, are, are members of other small groups, so they will also speak. So, and some of whom I was really worried that they weren't going to show up, so I'm really pleased they are. <laughs> hey. uh, maybe Charles would just like to raise his hand so people know who Charles is.
Patrick Gallagher. I'm. Uh, my mom was Charles Duffy's sister, and there was a big group, somewhat of a big group there. And this is my wife Hiroko. We met in Hawaii. So we uh, ended up uh, going there a lot. While he was uh, little, Patrick was under two. They fly for free as long as they're under two. So we uh, got as many as we could. <laughs> it was tough, but <laughs> that's. Uh, but we're out in the West Coast now, San Francisco area, and uh, continuing. is my first cousin, Ken is my first cousin, uh, Charles is my uncle, uh, and my mom is uh, Jean Duffy Miller, who isn't here because um, we wore her out three weeks ago by dragging her across the country to Massachusetts for my daughter's college graduation. And she would really have loved to be here, but she just didn't have the wherewithal to, to come. Uh, and we too are part of that uh, mini clan that's descended from uh, Catherine McCarney. And we are really thankful that Pat discovered us uh, and uh, trolled us in uh, to uh, join your uh, wonderful gathering. Possibly Ann Lindell. Um, 
I'm not, I don't remember now, but it all sounded so fascinating and we were wanting to make those connections. So that's how this all started and evolved and here we are tonight. Did, have we missed anyone? Your Dave husband. Jingle. <laughs> um, I'd like Dave to stand up and introduce his daughter and, well, you know me, I'm not exposed. I don't know why she, uh, you know, missed me, obviously, but she, <laughs> I'm Dave Diggles. I think I've met everybody here uh, by now. Uh, so our oldest daughter, Laura, is with us uh, today. We've got uh, three more children. Uh, Paul is going to be here by noon tomorrow. Zaya, our youngest, will be here in the afternoon. And Peter, our youngest, is up in Duluth waiting for the birth of their, of their first child uh, next week. So. They decided they better pass on this uh, this event today, so or this weekend. So that's the family. One is here. Third one. Yep. Uh, 
Lura Lura Lura. Can we do that? Tura Lura Lura. If you know the verse, sing it with me. If you don't, we'll all come in on Tura Lura Lura. sum of two dollars per month 
uh, in August uh, for service, excuse me, and then in August of 1881, uh, Congress apparently thought that that was kind of cheesy, so they gave him a 50 percent increase to three dollars a month. Uh, in April of 1884, excuse me, December of 1886, they gave him another 30 percent, which got it up to four dollars a month. And then finally, in August of 1888, they settled at $16 a month. Uh, and Congress thought that they had done their job. Uh, I think there's going to be some McCarneys uh, joining us on Sunday when we go out to Manana. And uh, I'm sure I'm going to meet a couple that I've never met before. Uh, but it's a, it's a wonderful group. Uh, I can't figure out what happened to uh, my great-grandmother and uh, Elizabeth uh, McCartney Mitchell were sisters. My grandmother was the oldest girl and she was the youngest. And then some Swedes and some Germans and stuff uh, inter you know, got into this really nice little Irish family and, and got them away somehow. But we love you all. Thanks, Del. That was something, wasn't it? Uh, disability payment to my great grandfather. Four dollars a month there. <coughs> Now we'd like to hear some more music. Uh, Ken Duffy is going to sing a song for us today. Okay, it was Pat Dingle. 
<laughs> Tugging at the heart to Litchfield or but it's not the Larney. We're all McCarney. This clan is made of you and me. This clan is your clan. This clan is my clan. From the north of Ireland to the Cascade Mountains, from country farmers to city charmers, this land is made you and me. From California and Arizona, North Dakota to Minnesota, we come by the dozen to meet our cousins. <laughs> this clan is made of you and me. May Carney's your clan, may Carney's our clan. From the north of Ireland to the Cascade Mountains, from country farmers to city commons. This clan is made of you and me. This clan catchy uh, melody that all of us know and we were quick to pick up on some of the recurrent refrains and I can imagine after he sings it two or three more times that on Saturday and Sunday all of us are going to be driving off across the, the prairies uh, singing in the back seat of cars uh, this new uh, song and that reminds me of my grandmother uh, who was a McCarney Flynn, Mary B. Flynn, uh, who I think was probably the greatest inspiration to me to pursue this avocation. And, and professionally, because I turned out to be an archaeologist, to uh, per pursue that line of work, which is searching for clues in the past. And some of my earliest memories of her were on long trips across California, uh, from ca Southern California, where we live, to Northern California to visit my cousins there. And I think somehow in the process, I just absorbed um, from her tales of having ridden literally in a stagecoach and then taking the I mean, taking the Great Northern across to the Northwest, um, this uh, sense of, of um, roots and the destiny of movement toward the West. Uh, and we never talked about it, about the importance of, of roots or Irish tubers. Uh, uh, but uh, I think that it uh, is what seeped into me and couldn't get out from underneath the skin. And McCartney Flynn is very uh, shallow underneath my skin surface. I don't have to scratch very far at all. Um, and I think it's uh, really tremendously important for all of us to have opportunities like this to 
uh, be able to gather together and see our connections and look back to where we came from. So um, on Sunday, I'm supposed to say something more formal, but uh, that's about all that I have to say. How again appreciative I am of this opportunity, and uh, and uh, to one of the silent members of the crowd is Mary Lee Flynn, who uh, is uh, uh, the grandmother of a number of us. Thank you.
Number three, thou shalt leave no trace of your female children. <laughs> Number four, thou shalt, after naming your children from the above list, never refer to them by those given names again. <laughs> Instead, thou shalt call them by strange nicknames, such as Ike, Eli, Polly, Dolly, or Suki. <laughs> Five, thou shalt not use any of the middle names on any legal documents or census reports, and whenever possible, use only initials on legal documents. Six, thou shalt learn to sign all documents illegibly, so that your surname can be spelled or misspelled in various ways, such as Tipper, Topper, Hopper, Tucker, or Tapper. <laughs> Seven, thou shalt after no more than three generations make sure that all family records are lost, misplaced, burned in a courthouse fire, lost at sea, or buried so that no future trace of them can be found. Eight, thou shalt propagate misleading legends, rumors, and vague innuendo regarding your place of origin. Nine, thou shalt leave no cemetery records, headstones, or headstones with legible names, nor will any of the dates thereon match any of those in public record. Thou shalt leave no family Bible with records of birth, marriage, or death. Thou shalt always flip thy name around. If born James Albert, thou, thou must make the rest of thy records in the name of Albert, A.J., J.A., A.L., Bert, Bart, or Fred. <laughs> Thou must also flip thy parents' names around when making reference to them, although unknown is an acceptable alternative. <laughs> Thou shalt name all generations of children with the identical first names, as will all of the brothers, so that all cousins are named the same. There's a couple of taglines. Genealogy is not fatal, but it is a grave disease. <laughs> Genealogists never die, they just lose their senses. <laughs> A genealogist nightmare. Many years ago, when I was 23, I got married to a widow who was as pretty as can be. This widow had a grown-up daughter who had hair of red. My father fell in love with her, and soon the two were wed. This made my dad my son-in-law, and that changed my very life. My daughter was my mother, for she was my father's wife. To complicate the matters worse, although it brought me joy, I soon became the father of a bouncing baby boy. My little baby then became a brother-in-law to dad, and so became my uncle. Though it made me very sad, for if he was my uncle, then that also made him brother to the widow's grown-up daughter, who of course was my stepmother. And he became my grandson, for he was my daughter's son. My wife is now my mother's mother, and it makes me blue. Because although she is my wife's, she's my grandmother too. If my wife is my grandmother, then I am her grandchild. <laughs> and every time I think of it, it simply drives me wild. For now I have become the strangest case you ever saw. As the husband of my grandmother, I am my own grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, no book is entirely perfect, for errors will creep in. Sometimes wrong information is sent by someone's nearest kin. And even printers make mistakes, for which they tear their hair. Sometimes two people disagree on who or what or where. It might have been the person who wrote the history. It might have been the typist or blame the author, me. So if you're dead before you're born, or married when you're three, or I've omitted anyone who sent themselves to me, or your last name is not your own, your picture not too good, I ask you please forgive me. I did the best I could. <laughs> I thank you all for coming tonight. Feel free to just hang around, have another drink. Yeah, I'm shutting up here for lunch.
ここはモーリスってところでパトリックのお母さんの母親が生まれ育ったところです。ここはモーリスってところでパトリックのお母さんの母親が生まれ育ったところです。When I had chosen my subject, I was about two weeks choosing it. I can remember we had a, we lived along the shore of this lake, and I used to take walks all around the clear around the lake, thinking about what this. Uh, and finally, I I couldn't get a, a subject that I couldn't name. I knew what I wanted. I wanted to, to, to talk history. I didn't know just how to to, to uh, give it what title to give. And it took me about two weeks walking around that lake. You know, what a child owes to his mother, I owe, we go to the past, namely our existence and the rudiments of our environment. And that sentence, that's all I needed. I think the uh, initial sentence in any speech is the all-important thing. Clear, could hear it across the street at night. It was given at night in the little old town hall with the front doors open, and it was packed clear back across the street outside and they heard every word of it. In public speaking, you want to give the audience time to think a little bit, know what you're talking about. Oh, I love public speaking. I just loved it. Before elections, I politicked. I had more fun with that than anything I ever did in my life. Oh, yes, but St. Paul, Minneapolis papers had it the next morning. How old were you then? Uh, 18, past 18. Past 18. Were they a little surprised that you would come out with this kind of wisdom? Yes, because it was the first the women hadn't done it. But oh, I just loved politics. I just loved it. I was superintendent in 1902. You were a superintendent? In Minnesota, yeah. Uh, how many schools did you have? Fifty-seven in the county. Man, and you kind of traveled around on that horseback, didn't you? <laughs> no, no, I had, to, had a buggy and Uncle Jackie there. My brother Jackie was my brother. Dad, let's go.
gal we are. Quite muggy. Oh, absolutely. And that's an understatement, but it's sunny. We had a real horrendous storm Okay. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hi. So we're trying to give you a little vicarious uh, uh, virtual experience here. Uh, oh, he did. He's a good boy, that Charles is. He tell you he's feeling a little under the weather. Yeah. No. No, that's tomorrow. Yeah, I mean we're. We're sort of the uh, short-tailed relatives today. We're the the Scandinavians have the center stage, uh, uh, the, the, the other side of, the, of their family. The Irish immigrants. So we're we're here. Um, and Al didn't come either. He wasn't feeling very good. Uh, so so um, uh, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, a day which. His temperature would uh, please you. It's uh, in the east that you will get to see when you come visit us. And we're, we're taking lots of stills, uh, so uh, we hope to... Oh, yeah. No, they went... Uh, Virginia and Melanie went off to the... Uh, uh, to Minneapolis to do their stuff. Their state capital. Uh, no, they cut let, them, they think. Let the butt stand. Hi, Gene. This butt never gone. I'm just kind of a maverick here. Yeah. But this is my this is my second trip, Gene. You know, two years ago, Joan and I were here. And yeah, and I'm pretty sure we're standing in the right spot, too. No doubt about it. It's lo just a lovely. Well, I, I got a, this, yeah, I know this afternoon, somewhere along when I was in the middle of the heat, I was trying to ask myself, what am I doing here? <laughs> but uh, I I always enjoy it, Gene. Always enjoy it. I've been to, this is the third family type reunion for the Flins and uh, whoever, the McCarneys, and, and I've always had a wonderful time. I hope you're doing well. Yeah, what? Yes, right. I don't blame you. Well, we'll have some wonderful pictures and everything for you. Okay? So you take care, Jean. Nice to... Yeah, anybody else here? Yeah, uh, hello, Jean. Can you hold on for a second? Here's Joan. I want to talk to you. Hi, I just wanted to put in my best wishes, too. This is... This is... I'm doing fine. We're having a good time. This is a very, very bucolic setting. We're standing in the shade of the trees, tall, uh, pine, and I don't know what else. Oh, another tree. And, uh, fir trees and something else. And uh, there's, there's just oh, so much low green grass everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And a squirrel running around and, and somebody's little flower garden right to our left with those big eastern kind of flowers, you know, that take lots of moisture. Oh yeah, there's there's little kind of bungalow uh, houses here now.
German hardship to Meeker County. We now enjoy our American bounty. We eat potatoes in our Winnebago. <laughs> this fifth plan is made to you and me. Our families spread apart, but something called us tugging at the heart to come to Litchfield or bus. It's not Balarney, we're all McCarney. This plan is made of you and me. This plan is your plan, this plan is my plan. From the north of Ireland to the Cascade Mountains, from country farmers to city charmers, this plan is made of you and me. From California and Arizona, North Dakota to Minnesota, we come by the dozen to meet our cousins. This plan is made of you and me. McCarney's your plan, McCarney's our plan. From the north of Ireland to the Cascade Mountains, from country farmers to city charmers, this plan is made for you and me. This plan is made for you and me. Take pictures of this, Joe. Okay, Patrick. Yeah. They had, the children was nothing. 